this is Liz with Making It Easy with Liz. Thank you for tuning into my channel. Today is a sewing project which I absolutely fell in love with. I, 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 at first I thought a pillowcase. Eh, I don't, why? What's the big deal about making a pillowcase? Then I made one, and these are magical. They're awesome. They're so much fun to make. They are perfect for the beginner, and you end up with the most professional, high-end results that it makes a fabulous gift. You can sell it in craft shows. And um, anyway, this is our beautiful pillowcase. It's magical in how all of this comes together. It has beautiful French seams on the inside, which are all finished. You can actually finish this project in an hour. You can whip these things out like crazy. Now, if you want to do a king size, then you would make it a little bit longer and I'll tell you what the measurements are for that. So let's go ahead and get started on this awesome, awesome project! I love it! <sighs> So I have my main pillowcase fabric, which is 28 inches by the width of the fabric, which is usually about after by 44, 45 inches. And all of my fabric is pre-washed. Pre-wash your fabric. And what I did was I put, I put uh, selvage. So this is how it came off the bolt, right? You got your two cut sides. So what I did was I went and I just cleaned up and, and squared off my cuts. Then we have our cuff on the end of the pillowcase and this is nine inches by the width of the fabric. And this, if you needed to add a little bit of length to your, you can make this 10 inches if you wanted. Um, you can, you, you know, you can do whatever you want with that if you needed to add a little bit length. So this is for a regular size pillow. Now if you wanted a king size pillow, this would be 36 by the width of the fabric for a king size pillow. And then we've got our accent piece, which is a two inch strip by the width of the fabric. Okay, so I've cleaned up my, my, end, my sides here, and all my little strings hanging off. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our accent piece, fold them in half this way, raw edge to raw edge, and we're going to go to the iron accent piece, folded in half lengthwise, and that I pressed a nice crisp crease. First we're going to take our uh, cuff, and we're going to open it up with the pretty side facing up, like so. So we're going to start sandwiching our pieces here. And I'm just going to put a pin in. And just to hold it in place, keep it lined up so this is raw edge to raw edge. Okay, and then we're going to Okay, so see you're always going to have like some left over um, because unfortunately not all, all fabric is the same width. So you're going to end up with some excess. And that's okay because our, our measurements are generous enough to um, work with that. Now comes our main piece. And this we're going to go lengthwise. And this is going to go face down. And we're going to line it right up. Now we're going to lie our main fabric face down and line up all of our raw edges again and feel free to pin this in place because we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up pulling these pins and re-putting them in, but to get everything nice and evened up, I 
I finished pinning the top. All of my raw edges are pinned together. We've got, this is our pillowcase piece. Then underneath we have our cuff. And then there's our little accent piece hidden under there, okay? So everything's sandwiched in. Now this is where the miracle happens. This is so cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to start rolling up from the bottom our main piece here and just start rolling it up like so. And we're going to roll it to just about like the bottom of our pins. We just don't want this to get fetched up in our seam. Now we're going to take this piece and we're going to fold it up and lay that right on top and match up our raw edges. Now take our pins out and pin everything together. Just like that. So we're just going to take them out and pin it together. So I'm all pinned and I'm making sure I can see that my roll is not up in here where my seam's going to end up. So that you just want to make sure you don't catch that in into your seam. And now we're going to go to the machine and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam. Okay, we're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam. I'm set at about two and a half, three on my length. Straight stitch and we're going to back stitch. And we're just going to sew a quarter of an inch seam. I always take my pins out. So here we have our tube with our pillow inside of it and we've got our quarter inch seam. And I did back tack. See, I back tacked back here because this is going to come off. We're going to even we're going to uh, even this all up. And so make sure you back you you uh you back tack your your seams. And now this is what's going to be amazing. We're going to pull out our pillow case out from the tube look how cool that is there Look at that. Look how beautiful. Look, it's all finished nicely. Nice seam in the back. And all of your raw edges are going to be tucked inside. No one's ever going to know they're there. Look at how perfect that is. Isn't that pretty? I'm hooked on these, and I want one of every single one I make. It's terrible. It's a sickness, I know. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to square up our edges. We're just clean up these edges and make them eat nice and even. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold it in half. I don't really want any of the selvage in there, so I'm just trying to find a happy medium where I don't lose any width. That looks good. And now, now it's these edges here that you want to make sure you have them nice and clean trimmed. You don't want any of the little, the little uh, scraggly uh, uh, threads from the fabric sticking out because what will happen is in your French seam that will pop out on the right side of the fabric and they're, they're just horrible to have to deal with. So keep this nice and clean right here and you'll be much happier.
Now we've finished this part, so now we're going to take it to the ironing board and we're going to go and just press our seams nice and crisp and put a nice crisp uh, uh, crease into the cuff. Now we've got this all nicely pressed and what I was getting at with those little threads, right, getting those off of your pieces, this is what happens. You find them poking out through here and they're just a bugger to try to pull through. They're horrible to work with so if you can get those nice and clean on the inside you won't have to deal with trying to pick out the little threads afterwards. So we're putting this wrong sides together and we're going to match up our cuff because we want it to look like it's one continuous piece. So we're going to line up line up our seam here In that. And then line up up here. Okay, so you're just going to pin your two, your two sides together, and then we're going to do a quarter of an inch seam or a little less if you can swing it. Um, and then we're, we're, we're going to trim it and then you won't have, we'll trim it to about an eighth of an inch and then you will get rid of those little, the little um, frayed pain in the rear end threads. Now I'm ready to sew my scant of a quarter inch seam down both my sides here. I have it pinned. We're going to also want to make sure that we back tap. So I'm now down to the end, and now I'm going to just lift up with my needle, put in the thread into the fabric. Ah, I can't speak. Um, I'm going to pivot my fabric in the corner there, and now I'm just going to come and go down my my second seam. So I have my seam, and it's just a little bit narrower than, than a quarter of an inch. But see these little threads here? We're going to trim this down to about an eighth of an inch seam, and that will get rid of all these little threads, because the little threads will poke out of the final, the final end result, and that is, like I said, pretty annoying. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim this down. My rotary cutter is the easiest way. Okay, so now we're going to turn this inside, inside out. I like to use a little chopstick to poke out my corners.
Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to press press our seams. We're going to take them and roll it a little bit and just get this pressed nice and even. Okay, so that's going to take a little bit of time. We don't want it to be like this. We want to get that seam out and have it nicely pressed all the way around. So now I have it I have it inside out. I went in and I pressed my seams nice and close nice and crisp so it's got a nice edge and now we're gonna go and we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch seam on this and what that will do is we're gonna be avoiding we don't want to catch our raw edges in there of this seam that we have so if you trim this down to an eighth of an inch and you and you do a quarter inch seam there's no way you're going to catch those raw edges in there and this is where those little threads come into play because they get caught out and when you turn this right side out all those little threads come out anyway I seem to keep repeating myself on that but they drive me nuts so let's go ahead and we're going to sew ourselves we're going to sew our quarter inch seam on our two sides and then guess what it's done So now we have our quarter inch seam and what's going to be really nice about this is that our, our raw edges are all hidden inside once again. So we're going to turn it right side out. Take my trusty chopstick and I just want to poke out the... Now see, here's what I'm talking about. Here is one of those stray threads from the raw edge. These are just going to make you crazy. So you got to go through and, and uh, pull them out or, or trim them out. Anyway, I guess you just can't get away from that. They make me crazy. And there we go. We have a beautiful beautiful pillowcase. Isn't that gorgeous? I hope you like this tutorial. I hope I hope I explained it well enough for you. So here's our finished project. Aren't you happy with the way that turned out? Aren't you pleased? It's so pretty. And here is a Christmas one that I did for my husband and I each have one and you can it's endless and the combinations are awesome and you're just going to uh, fall in love with them. You're going to want to keep every single one that you make. Don't do that. I have a sickness. I know that. I need to come up with a 12-step program. I work in a fabric store, and that's the worst place for me to work. Um, anyway, hope you like this project. I hope you'll give it a try, and uh, let me know how you make out. You can share your pictures of your pillowcases on my Facebook page, Making It Easy with Liz, and um, have fun.